Okay, so I think my first one, and this one will be the one question that will go to all three of you, so it'll be good to get a quick background mm -hmm. as to sort of how, where you got started and how did you end up here. So it'll be, uh, you know, why did you choose to do what you do is sort of the, the, the underlying question. Sorry, okay. My name is Amin Manu. I'm the director of Rooms of the Sudan. Yeah. I, I've been with Marriott for 10 years now. I started my career in June 2004 with GW Marriott in Mumbai. Uh, after that, I went to the courtyard Marriott Gurgaon where I did an opening. And I've been in the hotel since December, sorry, September, August 2010. So part of the pre-opening team of the hotel. And it's been four great years working here. I think uh, hotels is something that uh, I've always wanted to work since I was in 11th grade. Okay. Uh, I love the feel, uh, you know, of hotels, and I really, I, I, I saw myself working in hotels, meeting new people. Uh, also, what interests me is traveling, and I think that comes along with being in the industry. Mm -hmm. So these are two things because of which I chose the hotel industry. Fantastic. Hi, I'm Subhash, and. Uh, the last year I was working as a chef, so I was the executive chef. I was the opening executive chef of this hotel, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been now 17, 17 years, you know, 1997 is when I started off from Bangalore, so moved around different cities in, uh, in India, and then uh, moved forward to take up this job of a director of operations to understand, have a holistic view of the entire operations, but, and uh, yeah, as a chef I enjoyed every bit of it, as you know that any career or any kind of profession, you know, has got a got a goal that you want to achieve. So the goal, I guess, was uh, getting recognized on an international platform, you know, yeah. which I did in 2012 as a Global Chef of the Year. Wonderful. So then, I, then I shifted tracks and decided, okay, why not train myself to be a, a good, you know, hotelier as an overall perspective. And that's why the attempt is on. Okay, yeah. perfect. Hi, I'm Jatin, General Manager of JW Marriott Pune. Um, I've been in this industry for a good 17 years now. Uh, why did I join? Honestly, it was not a profession by choice. Okay. Um, I was like any other young kid coming out of school, didn't know what to do. Um, ended up doing hotel management and I guess it was after first initial three, four years that I really thought about it and I said, yes, this is what my career is. Um, and from there, I think it, it went in a different, uh, you know, kind of curve altogether. Been with Marriott for good eight years now. Started um, as a you know receptionist, what we call as front office assistant now, uh, at the Imperial Hotel. And in Marriott, I started my journey with Renaissance Mumbai as a front office manager. From there on, I moved on to different uh, you know projects of Marriott and done a couple of uh, pre-openings, and uh, landed in Pune in uh, April 2012. Okay, yeah. perfect. So my main set of questions is really about sort of this how how. There's something special about this hotel, at least I can tell from a guest. And that's just, as I said, it's just consistency of service across levels. In your, each of your opinions, how and why, uh, you know, how did this happen? Uh, why is it happening? And how do you make sure, or how do you try to make sure it continues to happen? You see, as the three P's go, you know, people across this bit of it. Yeah. So in terms of people, you live your core values, you know, of, of, of the hotel or of the business and trickle down. So service as a culture, you know, has to stop, has to start at the, at the top. Mm -hmm. And then gradually it filters down and, and that makes things happening. Secondly, you take care of your associate as the same married culture. You know? Take care of your associate, the associate will take care of your business. Mm -hmm. And we really live that. You know? We ensure that, okay, uh, our cafeterias, our lockers, or all this facility for associates, you know, is well taken care of. Mm -hmm. Uh, they they really they really have a great time and work with fun you know there's there's, mm -hmm. there's quite a bit which goes into that there's a HR department which ensures that there is activities planned for the teams to mingle together to have fun while they're working mm -hmm. and I think that that helps us in a, in a big way mm -hmm. so simple things like greet smile and serve was uh, was the first thing that any associate entering this hotel was yeah. taught when we opened up. Okay. So great smile serve, you know, it's just very simple. You know, and if you have a if you have a problem, speak about it. Because mm -hmm. I think, you know, eighty percent of, of all the problems are just manifestation of human brain, you know. Twenty percent is the core. So you focus on those those twenty percent and then life is easy. You know, we find solution to overcome that. 
What do you guys, what do you think, everyone here? Uh, I think uh, our team is uh, extremely passionate and driven. When we opened this hotel in 2010, we didn't know what we were getting into. Pune was a new market for a hotel of this nature. Mm -hmm. uh, but from day one, the kind of guest satisfaction scores that we've got and the yeah. kind of appreciation that we've received in our internal marriage system, it's something that we never thought we would achieve. I mean, yeah. we are one of the best hotels in terms of our guest satisfaction index scores in the marriage system in Asia Pacific. So once that happened, I think that really drove people to maintain that number one spot mm -hmm. because that really motivated even individuals, associates, you know, receptionists, to ensure that we stay on top uh, and that's one that need to stay on top has helped us uh, and we've obviously continued to raise the bar and improve our service and product standards to be there but that you know that feeling that is there in a doorman of the hotel or a chef that you know we have to be the number one hotel in guest satisfaction is something that has brought us till 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 where we are and uh, also i think there is a lot there's a great culture as subhash mentioned uh, the you know within within the hotel i mean there is a great bond between managers and associates uh, managers actually lead by example they don't just you know give uh, trainings and philosophies in meeting rooms but they actually walk the talk so they do it themselves whenever it's busy you'll see them running around and associates really really look up to them and respect them because of that so that entire service culture has been created because of you know uh, our core values in marriott which is take care of the associate they take care of the company and the guests and uh, yeah i think it's uh, a total hotel approach as far as this hotel goes hmm. where right from fnb to housekeeping front office, everyone is focused towards the guest. And it's not just one area. Some hotels leave it to, okay, front desk is responsible for handling guest complaints, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or ensuring that all guests leave satisfied. But here, even, uh, you know, uh, a steward in a restaurant or a chef would come up to the front office team and say that, I think this guest is upset. Maybe you want to have a chat with him. Otherwise, all these areas are too busy in their own thing. So that's what makes it a total hotel approach. You know, housekeeping boys, realizing that a guest has run out of toothpaste and replenishing it mm -hmm. automatically. These are things that, you know, I think put us apart from other hotels. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to echo the same sentiments as Subhash and everybody. I think it's about our people. Mm -hmm. We're in an industry where people are serving people. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not into a car manufacturing unit or some other place where you can do a lot of, you know, kind of rigid processes. Uh, our people make the difference, in my opinion. Uh, we've got some great training which happens day to day basis. Uh, one of the best part which has happened with us is we've been open now for a good three and a half years. Thirty five percent of our workforce is still from a pre opening stage. Mm -hmm. What that means is that we've been able to grow them, we've been able to build their courage, we've been able to build their confidence, and which is what when the associates sees when they join. And that's not the norm across the industry. No, that's no. not normal across the okay. industry. Uh, that is pretty, pretty healthy sign. Okay. Uh, our entire XCOM uh, is pretty much passionate. Uh, we always say this, we are not a hotel where you've got a top-down approach. Mm. Uh, to say the least, that you will rarely go to hotels where a housekeeping boy uh, leaves a note for you with his own name to say that, hope everything is fine, yeah. or goes and picks up a box of chocolate and leaves for you as an amenity. A lot of time these, these things are left for managers to do, uh, you know, to write a nice flowery note uh, for a guest, however we don't believe in that. And how do you manage to do that? How, because I've received a note from your house, housekeeping boy and I was blown away. So how do you manage to sort of inculcate that across levels? The only thing what we try and do in that is, uh, we've given empowerment to our associates to do that. The only thing we request is that uh, before you place it, show it to your supervisor in terms of what you're writing. It should be professional enough, mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise they are empowered. If let's assume I am a houseboy today and Subhash is staying in, in, in the hotel and I know that he was not feeling well yesterday, which is done through a logbook, I will leave a note for Subhash saying that, hope you're feeling well, mm -hmm. let me know if you need anything, Jatan. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Nothing more, nothing less, just a simple message. And I think this, this is all empowerment, this is what gives them you know, that passion. And I, I personally believe when we opened the hotel with Subhash and a lot of our other guys, uh, you know, after 2011, I think we as a team have made winning into a habit. With mm -hmm. our customers, their loyalty, winning a lot of accolades within our system, mm -hmm. our company, or how many awards we won as the best hotel. And I think we've made winning as a habit and we're all passionate about it. Right. That, that comes to fun. So I just want to pick up one of the things you said. So, you know, it, it sounds simple that you have an HR department that does this and that. Uh, one of the things I noticed is I do know, you know, some of quite a few of the managers in the front desk. They all work very hard. 
but they're still sort of engaged you know seemingly as a team they attend the holy celebration they do this they do that of they, well, how, there's still something i'm missing right because a lot of places have hr departments but that doesn't mean that you know it, it functions as well what do you think See, you guys as, do differently as, as i told you that it's it's more about you know uh, passion should be reflected in each aspect of hotel delivery mm-hmm. so it's not that you know i will not be passionate about you yeah. and i expect you to deliver passionate food that's yeah. not working yeah so when i say that okay i am i am very passionate about what i do yeah and i am genuinely interested in abhimanyu yeah so i will know everything about abhimanyu yeah and i will see to it that when i have to exhibit that passion I will make sure it let it be his birthday celebration yeah. or let it be a holy celebration yeah I will you know go full on to make sure that it is a celebration for people to remember but what, so then a different question would be what what do you guys do differently to hire such folk what what, what do you think you do different to you know okay we have got like certain philosophies you know, yeah. like like very basic things mm-hmm. you know the simple things of life makes a bigger difference yeah so it's like suppose we are hiring a chef okay? yeah. so we ensure that okay happy chef makes happy food yes okay yeah so we hire people for attitude yeah skill we will teach them and certain specialized skill of course they if mm. they have it carry with them and okay. they have the attitude also and we develop them into a business okay okay secondly if you see a problem you own a problem and you resolve a problem Mm. Your respective, you approach a chef and you say that you got a sprained leg because the pillow was not nice. Mm. You know, if he doesn't understand anything about pillows, yeah, he will approach a guy who will know about pillows, mm. and he will go and approach and say, "Do you have any kind of other pillows? This guest is having a problem." Mm. So the other guy who's an expert in the field, he will approach you and he will see to it that it is done. Mm. Till the point it is not done, and the first guy whom you have mentioned this thing about. is going to follow up at the back end with this guy that is it close is it close mm-hmm. secondly we have got something very open system about what is called a dir which is a daily incident report okay so what happens is we encourage people mm-hmm. that if there is a problem you report the problem mm-hmm. when you report the problem they can resolve the problem mm-hmm. so there is nothing to hide there is no reprimand mm-hmm. you know if you do a mistake mm-hmm. you are not reprimanded like tomorrow morning mm-hmm. you did a mistake you owned up to the mistake and you escalated the mistake mm. and you know, there are senior managers you know who are in the job yeah. to do the job yeah. and resolve your mistake you know and yeah. to see to it the guest has come back so that's that's a whole you know there is a whole culture about that okay nobody works in threat okay because you cannot deliver exceptional service with threat that's true that yeah. either you do this or you are fired yeah. you know, that doesn't work mm. so it is more about that communicating that okay you do your job I am there to take care of you. If there is anything which is happening wrong, you know, don't don't be afraid. Just mention it to me. I will I will handle it. You know, that's the kind of confidence that the managers give it to them. You know, right. yelling and shouting etc. is not a virtue that we exercise. You know, it's not a thing that we exercise. We believe that okay, you know, people understand. You make them understand, and that's a better way. Because it's also you know the moment of truth. So yeah. If something happens in the back. front of his back area yeah. and the associate is after yeah. after some kind of yelling shouting yeah. he comes he or she is going to give it back to the guest you know true, true. these are simple simple things you know which yeah of course the processes as it appears is broken down so much that it becomes looks very simple yeah but it may be in a different place you know uh, to do this kind of a setup it will take take a while you know because what you speak you know and how how do people trust you and so on that's that's uh, that's a a big difference hmm. like what jatin gave an example that housekeeping will put a note yeah. he will also put a note that if anything special that you want so that you expect okay can i get a khichdi or so yeah the guy will coordinate he will have a contact in chef you know? yeah so the chef will okay this you want no problem i'll get it yeah and you know everybody is then involved in the process so there is more of genuinity in service and hmm. i think that that makes us a leader in terms of uh, delivering exceptional services and you know to the point of Uh, DIR or supermarket. What happens is when you end up sending just an example as Kitri to somebody, that is again recorded okay. by saying that so and so was not well in weights and Kitri. So what happens is next day when you are in lobby, yeah, there'll be two to three people again asking, "I hope you're feeling well." Yeah. So it's about communication throughout. Okay. And yes, when it comes to hiring, we don't hire for uh, you know just pay off skills. We hire for your attitude, for mm-hmm. your drive, what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And then obviously there are certain other you know stuff keeps on happening, 
right from joining, you're not, not left alone for first month as a body system is there, you're mm -hmm. inducted properly into the system, not thrown into deep to you know, fend on your own. So those kind of things give confidence to people, which they enjoy as their first job or second job and they can make comparisons or they can fall in love with their first job and then they stick on. Okay. And that really works well for us. So for each three of you, right, you have, I'm sure, multiple reports, especially given you know, how, how large the staff is. What is your philosophy uh, of sort of managing these people, managing these people, leading these people? What is your personal, what do you go back to, right? When there's difficulty, what do you go back to in good times? So how do you think about sort of leadership slash management? Uh, I think with regards to people who report to me, the number one thing that stands out for me is, of course, the hire for attitude, as Subhash mentioned, yeah. is commitment. Yeah. So I need everyone to be 100% committed to the job that they're doing in this hotel, at least when they're reporting to me. If you're not 100% committed, your mind is wavered, you know, you're thinking of something else. You know, it's best that we talk about it, discuss it, and probably do something for you. But if you're working in our hotel, we want you to be 100% committed. Now, one way how we do that is, like, we've got certain key initiatives that we roll out every year to ensure that our standards remain number one, you okay. know, and, and great. So we uh, get a buy-in right from the associate level mm -hmm. on, you know, what we need to do. Five broad goals, how do we achieve them? Everybody gives in their input. We put it all together and we roll it out as one strategy. Mm -hmm. So obviously everyone's driven because they've thought of those processes and uh, they want to deliver all of that every day on the shop floor and then you know obviously get rewarded for the results. Mm -hmm. So that is one way how we get the commitment out. But mm -hmm. for me, the number one thing that I need from my three or four people who report to me mm -hmm. is that they're motivated, passionate and committed to the job. Mm -hmm. So that's the most important thing for me. Uh, of course, there are ups and downs sometimes, you know, uh, uh, there are roadblocks to that uh, motivation and yeah. we always share it, discuss it out, see what we can do. There are a lot of aspirations within the team, yeah. you know, people in India want to grow a year and a half and want to get on to the next position. Yeah. Uh, so Merit is a growing company, yeah. so we also have a lot of positive moves, like I can give you four or five examples from my team, yeah. guys who move to other married hotels in India at higher levels, that not only motivates them, hmm. and but even the people across the board managers, associates, because they all see that, hmm. you know, they see that as a growth and that's again a big, big motivation. Sometimes we lose our best people uh, from, from the hotel to get better positions in other marriage hotels, but it's a great win because that motivates yeah. so many more to become and replace that person. Yeah. So to give you an example, we've only hired in one of my areas, which is front office, we've had just one manager in the past four years. Okay. And we have about six or seven managers in the team. All of them are, you mm -hmm. know, intern. Okay. So that's that's a huge motivation again. So yeah. Hmm. What about you? For me, uh, I I I manage people by trust. Okay. So I trust that a person or individual has joined join a team to <coughs> deliver exceptional services. Mm -hmm. He has joined a team that his growth should be exceptional. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he or she when he's performing, you know, I trust that he is doing what he is best at, you know. And if there's something which is missing, of course it happens, you know. So that's a learning curve where I pitch into make sure that okay, he's at par or something. You know, and I think being genuine in whatever I approach. Yeah. So there is nothing as you know, uh, in between. There are likes, there are dislikes, there is communication, open communication, you know. I may be wrong sometimes. Understanding that I may be wrong sometimes is very important. Yeah. And how you take it is also very important. That's you know simple simple things. Apply. You keep saying simple. I come back to that. <laughs> well, in terms of management style, I think um, I'm pretty much into a participative management style, uh, right from cascading down of goals or what you know when we are in meetings. Sometimes democracy can be a little uh, you know uh, problem, but that's okay. You know, I, I, we all love that. Uh, biggest <coughs> thing what happens in, in in hotel and what we have seen till the time you give people freedom to air their viewpoints. Mm. It's very really important that they'll start participating and buying into your viewpoints or your vision. Mm. Uh, and once that happens, I think that, that really pulls the team together. Uh, and I think we as a team do that wonderfully. Mm. And when I say we do that wonderfully, I don't mean only at manager level. If you walk around our hotel, if you go to any of the operational areas or any of the back of the house areas, Everybody will know their balance co or everybody will know their goals, or everybody will know what the top issues are of their department, mm. or anything other, other than that whatever has been there. So, so that really kind of pulls everything together. I think that's how we all try and work. Okay. Got it. So now, different question for you. Now, you, when you guys go to hotels, 
uh, I'm sure you know you visit other hotels, etc. I'm sure you see you see it from a very different point of view, a different angle, uh, etc. You know, what do you think? In your view, right? When you when you when you when you look at other hotels and, and look at what you guys are doing here, what are are there some things that are fundamentally different, or do you just feel like it goes down to like little nuances, like you know, training people to use the right tone of voice, etc. Or are there things that you see that you just feel like, hey, you know, if they did this or this or this or got a bunch of fundamental things right, then it would kind of change the texture. What are some of these kind of key building blocks when you think of? Hotel service and and doing really well in this industry. Of course, it starts with hiring, you know. Okay. Hiring, if you're concentrating on the attitude part of it. Yeah. You know that's kind of positive because you cannot teach anybody how to be humble. Mm -hmm. I have not come across any training mm -hmm. where somebody can teach you humility. You know how to be humble. Mm -hmm. You know how to be how to be uh, genuinely taking care of your customers. You mm -hmm. know? So I think as soon as you fix this issue, hmm. retrospective effect will be visible, you know, because if I am unable to communicate to you yeah. in some great accent or in a great English language usage, yeah. as long as you see genuinity in my eyes, yeah. you know, it's a winning moment because mm. you will understand, okay, the guy is trying, mm. you know, that's okay. Mm. And then you will understand that, okay, he is genuine for me. Mm. I think that is what sets. So, so, so you think hiring is a fundamental? Absolutely. I think that that is the most key factor. Okay. That is one and two that you live what you speak. Okay. You live because especially with the transition and the in the generation changing yeah. so fast, yeah. everybody is observing you. Oh, is he a trainer? So when he is a trainer, yeah. is he just blabbering from his mouth? Yeah. Or or is he is he speaking quoting from some books? Yeah. Or does he know that okay what is he talking? Or is he living that or not? So once you are living it, it's easy. Okay. Yeah. What, about, what do you think? Uh, I think if your question is that do we notice uh, you know when you go to I'm sure hotels, you do, but yes. I'm like what are, what are some of these building blocks that you notice that you look for uh, from uh, from your eyes, right? That you know what if they're doing are they doing the sort of A B C things correct? Mm -hmm. uh, and you know what what are some of these? So, so I clearly see hiring and walk the talk is sort of up. Uh, see, I would say one thing that I noticed in hotels in India for sure is that. A lot of times people are saying things just because they've been told to say that. Mm -hmm. They're not really using their head and seeing what best they can do for the customer. Mm -hmm. So I think many times we feel associates in hotels are inflexible and very, very rigid mm -hmm. in the way they come across to a customer. Mm -hmm. So if the guest says that, oh, can I get a late checkout at 2 o'clock? No, I'm sorry, sir, the checkout item is 12 noon. <laughs> the guest is coming to have breakfast in the morning. And he's coming at 11, 5. All he wants is a muffin and he's and a coffee and he's out but yeah. they say that oh sorry the breakfast is cleared you have to order a la carte he has to wait 45 minutes order and then you know pay 300 rupees which is not going to take us somewhere where we're not right now yeah. but you know so maybe the customer will never come back yeah. and in, in the long run it's going to be a bigger revenue loss yeah. than those 300 rupees that we earned that day True. so it's these small small things where I think you know uh, it again goes back to what Subhash said attitude hiring the right people then genuinely wanting to do it it's not just, oh, I, in front of my manager, I'm going to be really good to these guests. Yeah. I'm going to smile, I'm going to walk with him, I'm going to escort him, yeah. I'm going to do all the right things. It's about me wanting to genuinely ensure that Mr. Smith is happy. And I do whatever I can and I'm, I'm empowered to, to ensure that happens. Hmm. I don't just say things because my manager says, smile at the guests, so I'm standing in the lobby and smiling. Yeah. That happens in so many places. Yeah. You know, there's like robots, people are standing, smiling, good morning, good evening. Yes. But sometimes they don't even know why they're doing that. Why are they saying this? What is the ultimate aim of our hotel to ensure that every guest leaves satisfied? Mm -hmm. So I think training them in such a way, you know, showing them the forest rather than just the tree. You know, these are the things that I feel are really, really uh, different in some of the other hotels which I visit. Okay. So I think that's... Uh, so you're saying training more than training, yeah. Okay, good. And what about you? We always notice things whenever we go to hotel. Yes. It's a pain sometimes. Yes. You know, I go with my relatives yeah. and say, what's wrong? Enjoy yourself. Loosen up. <laughs> I'm always looking at things and commenting. <laughs> but not only in bad way. Yeah. There are times when we come back as team and we pick up a lot of good things from other yeah. hotels. Yeah. Whether it was their welcome experience in a different way. But, but you know, just to add, hiring and training. Nothing more than that. Mm. Um, if you're hiring with the attitude and passion which people have mm. and you're training them well for them to know what they're doing, 
Let's so the, 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 just, I just want to quickly add, the only thing I've not heard is processes. Like you keep, I mean, there are a lot of these little things that you do, uh, you know, TIR and logbook, etc. Do you, do you, do you, how, how big a role do you think that plays? Because it seems like it, it's pretty fundamental. You know, this is something which is very, very contradictory and, and we as a team are always open about it. Yeah. Uh, we are a hotel which is great in guest service, yeah. good product, great associates. Yeah. But somewhere we have realized is as a team that we're not a great process oriented hotel. And you know why? Okay. Because we leave it for people to do a lot of stuff. We do have tons of processes yeah. to make sure that guests are leaving happy. Yeah. But we are not binding people into it and saying that if you're not going to do this, okay. your job will <coughs> stay. No, yeah. we don't do that. No, okay. we don't operate with the LSOP style of management. Okay. You know, because then you're confirming individuals. Yeah. When you conform individual to certain thing, that's when they start remove, uh, behaving robotic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we don't we don't tell them, okay, this is a box, my friend. Yeah. You know, loosen up and fit inside this. Yeah. No, you don't have a box. You are I am Subhash, and my individuality is more important than anything else. Hmm. And then what I will do is I will not try to change you as a manager. Yeah. I will maneuver you. You know, I will show you alternate ways to do things. Okay. Okay. I will not change you because as soon as you say change, yeah. there is resistance. Yeah. Don't change. Be Subhash. But what I will do is I will maneuver you. I will I will teach you alternate way to do things. Is this better? Is my question. Yeah. So you will say, yeah, I think better. So do you think we should do this? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because then you're buying in and there's yeah. you know, then it's a natural process. The first so so you, you use processes but only so much. Look. We still pass audits. Yeah. We have tons of audits. Yeah. Right? From brand standards to finance to yeah. integrity to what not. Yeah. We still pass them. Yeah. Um, obviously that means that you have to do that bit which is which yes. is re required. Yeah. Let me just say one thing. Yeah. There are a couple of hotel companies without naming them yeah. who have tried to get into business excellence model. Yeah. Business excellence model like a TBM or a six yeah. is nothing but it is making sure that you are a process oriented yes. company yes. and not a personality driven. Yes. I still say we as a hotel are not personality driven, yeah. but we're not even a process oriented hotel. It's somewhere in the middle. We're somewhere in the middle. Uh, we as a team do great stuff together. Yeah. Uh, we are all you know, coming together to bring that passion into what we do. Yeah. We have processes as well. Okay. That's, how, that's how I was kind of sum it up. So we keep Make switching. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Final question. To each of you, what is an idea that inspires you that you would like to share? Give you a few seconds to think about it. When you say, you mean to say, which has inspired us in the past? Inspires you in general, like has inspired you in the past, inspires you generally, uh, what is an idea that inspires you that you would like to share? You see, as a hotelier, I think uh, that way I'll say for myself that I'm blessed, you know, because there is not a idea. Yeah. My day-to-day -day job is to meet people. Yeah. Okay, so it is company CEO to CFOs and the CEOs to a middle level manager yeah. and to a workman also, I will meet them, interact with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. So inspiration may come that, okay, when you see that, okay, you are meeting a credit so a CEO, you know, a big guy, so all right, and you don't know that he's a CEO, yeah. so you are having interaction with him. What inspires me is that you got to have that kind of a knowledge, apart from hoteliering, to enter into a conversation with him. Yeah. Because you're not going to just say, hi, how are you? Yeah. Are you feeling okay? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And go up. Yeah. Because when you're talking about developing a relationship, then you're also talking about to have a communication bridge. So to do that communication bridge, you need to have information. Yeah. For the information, you've got to read. Yeah. You know, I think for me, that is the inspiration. That okay, be a hotelier. So I meet with socialites. I yeah. meet with models. I yeah. meet with CEOs. Yeah. I meet with politicians. Too, yeah. You know? And I have a recipe for each one of them. <laughs> so the process is on, yeah. but what happens is you develop as a better individual to communicate to different people. You yeah. also interact with kids. Yeah. You see a lot of Gen Y coming up, you know, yeah. so you know that okay, how to interact. I think eventually I'll become a better father. You know. <laughs> that is the motivation for me. Great. Yeah. What you Well, um, I think uh, for me, every day is a new day in hotels. 
Uh, again, hotels is not sorry. Hotels is not rocket science that we have to do everything in a certain way. It's not like an assembly line. Yeah. Uh, every day we learn so much when we deal with our guests. We deal with guests from all over the world. We deal with so many situations every day. Uh, so it's more about a self learning. So there are so many ideas that I get every day looking at my associates, yeah. looking at our guests, talking to them, communicating. Uh, that make us you know implement new things every day. And uh, that's the biggest thing for me. It's not about doing things, you know, we do this amenity setup in this boardroom, but maybe, you know, there's a customer who says something else and it's really great, uh, you know, for our guests. So it's about constant uh, learnings. It's about constantly picking up new things that we can do to elevate our, our service levels and implementing them with a buy-in of our associates. So I get ideas every day and, uh, you know, uh, that's what helps us make it even a better place to work. For our associates and a better place to stay for our guests like you. Great. And I think uh, for me again, inspiration. You ask any hoteler actually, not only three of us. I think that self-learning model is so important for us because we, as an industry, yeah, uh, are a very different kind of an industry who doesn't have a lot of parallels. Yeah. And when I say that, what I mean is that we do not have a lot of career alternates available to us. Mm. Maybe today there are two, three mm. alternates available, but when we all joined, I think there was hardly anything. Mm. Uh, so I think self-learning, which keeps on inspiring you uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. you know what you really got to do. Yeah. But uh, I think not more than that. Anything, you know, there, there are tons of ideas which come to you. The best part about hoteling is that every week when we all meet together on a Friday evening yeah. to discuss our case, yeah. every now and then somebody will come with a great idea, yeah. and we'll all be really charged up. Once we execute that, yeah. we got to jump onto something next. Yeah. Uh, so you know that's that's the charm of our industry that we keep on doing something new every day. So it really helps us that way. Thank you guys. Thank it you. was a real pleasure.